All right, friends. Well, some of your prayers must have been answered because you're going to be getting maybe some of what you wanted because more bad luck has befallen me. Not me directly, but if I do a 180 here and you look way out there in the distance, it's probably the last 10 acres of corn or so that's left shelled in there and opened the field up with that 8900 and it sheared off the final drive shaft so it is out of commission so i think i had enough parts on hand that i gave him last year that we might be able to put that back together but just in case i'm probably going to have to break out some of my stuff here which is the plan that i had all along it just i never got there yet and i really didn't want to have to do it in such a rush but now I may not have any choice because that's a little too much to pick. I really don't want to pick that much. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I should try to sell it for like $6 a bushel and pick it. I don't know. Maybe some old woman will like to buy corn for her squirrels or something. But that is neither here nor there. So we're going to do some more work on this. This will probably be a multi-day video all condensed into one. But anyway, here we go. Welcome back. If you haven't seen my videos before, I'm Ross the Oliver Man. This here is the 7300 green variety that I bought last year uh, on an auction. I'm pretty sure it was last year in like December. And then I ended up getting it in January. But we got it going the other day where it will reliably drive and run without running out of fuel or plugging it up. And then more sadness has befallen us. I'm sorry I'm kind of stopped up all the working in that corn. Yeah, putting it in the bin late at night. Got me kind of plugged. <clears throat> but anyway, we got the machine running, tried it out. The head was stuck. I got that unstuck. That was nothing. I just, I don't know why. It was just not wanting to play ball. But I turned it by hand. It's good to go, I think. Uh, gathering chain it was missing I got one of those ordered that was no problem sprocket I'm pretty sure I got one of them on hand however I cannot find it for nothing so I guess I'm going to be ordering another one uh, you know why not and then uh, it tore this thresher drive belt which I looked it up it wasn't too ridiculously expensive it was 150 bucks or you know 175 probably by the time you get it here this one was pretty dry rotted uh ribs are missing in it and whatnot and it tore last time so i went ahead and robbed this one off of the red one because it was already taken apart so this was just a matter of unhanging it you know so a guy could get to it <clears throat> i used to go through you know maybe one a year on those sometimes just depending on what the weather conditions were like if it was a bad wet year you know and you were trying to get it done you would come by when it was probably a little too wet and end up roasting a belt some of them i think were just low quality belts like i said i tried multiple avenues and the dealer belts are by far the better quality so our next affair is this combine here still has the belt guard on it which one of mine does not my red one does not but this one does and as such that it adds an increased level of difficulty because you got to take that off too you know there's a couple bolts here then there's a couple bolts on each end which you might be able to get by with you know not doing all of that all the way i don't know i can't remember it's been a while the biggest headache though is up the ladder all right down here in the no good way to get to it category is the back side of the motor and what i mean is when you're obese there's a rail right here and there's no good way to sit where you can fit in here 
gently and comfortably. And also this combine still has this screen intact, which they did not all have, or at least they were long gone or what have you, because something happened like what happened to this one where when you step up on there and try to climb up higher, not paying attention when you come down and you step on the shield. So we gotta take this off because behind it is the drive pulley that has that multi uh, groove belt in it. There is two pulleys, basically what this is, since it's a 3, uh, 318 industrial engine, and the same way with the Perkins diesel version, you got your flywheel. Instead of a clutch, you've got a flat plate with a, spin, a uh, shaft mounted to it. I've actually got one loose I can show you sometime if I think of it. I just gotta remember where I put it. Uh, and on it, there's a cast V-groove pulley that does your long traction drive belt that goes down to your variable speed unit and then from there is the wide belt that it squeezes and that goes forward to your clutch shaft and your transmission so that's on the back position and then the front position is your multi-groove pulley for your uh, thresher drive belt strangely enough they decided to make that one out of aluminum so you have to be super duper careful when you're taking this off or you can break chunks out of it and I know this because my 545 has chunks missing out of it. I don't believe that I was the one who put them there, but uh, that combine also, as I think about it, had a rough go, and I did some work on that shaft to tighten everything up because all those pulleys were loose. They'd ate through the keyway and whatnot. And the other one I have on hand, the shaft setup, I bought for my red one because the one for factory air conditioning is longer it sticks out past here there's another pulley that goes on I can't stop yawning but there'd be another pulley that goes on out here and then to this bolts a bracket where your compressor mounts and then your air conditioning runs off the back side of the motor and i wanted to put air conditioning on that red one because i was using it for beans and as you may or may not have been able to tell i do not breathe very well so that is another contributing factor to me not wanting to run these combines on a regular basis because i can't breathe the next day or two or weeks or month after using them all day you know so i got to wear like wearing the paint respirator mask you know like you do when i'm in the grain bin i wear it and that really helps same way on these so i was thinking if i put air conditioning on at least it would be comfortable in there because man it could get it could get to be really hot inside that cab uh if you were running all day in it so just something to keep you from sweating a little less you know that's my thinking but that's a project for another day when we finally get the red one going again so enough blabbing it's about dark the way it is and i doubt we'll get this done today like i said but i wanted to try to make some progress so i'm going to take this cover off of here and i'll probably have to get an op or a box in wrench now that i look at it because i really don't want to take this screen off you don't have to to do it it's just a another uh, what do you want to say wrinkle in the plan so this is no fun i'm telling you that's why i was not thrilled about it when it broke let's get this out of the way because that's the that one's got the cable on and that's annoying and i'm not sure we want to have that you know I'm thinking we're going to put the ground cable back, not, not in there, I don't know. We need to at least get that other one out of there. I don't know why they, somebody, now that I look at it, it wasn't the ground cable, I bet, that they replaced. They replaced the hot cable, and uh, anyway. It was really routed down, which is the way it probably should be. And they just stuck it through this hole, which is here for no reason. I don't really understand the reasoning behind that gigantic gaping hole. Unless this combine was originally supposed to be air conditioning, and maybe that's where the hoses went through. 
but that doesn't really make sense either. I'm betting somebody just thought, you know what would look cool there? A hole. A wrench to get down in there and get those two out. And then I need also a hammer and this little pry bar to tap because if I believe there are two dowel pins in here, if I remember correctly, either that or two of the holes actually have a dowel pin and the bolt goes through the center. And it can be a real pain in the knutson to get that off sometimes. So that's what we'll do. I'll go get the tools and we'll be right back. All right. Are you still there? Because sometimes I wonder if I'm still here. Another fun fact I was thinking about was I tried to buy this combine on several occasions. I uh, knew where it was. I'd saw it at that national show and I knew it was in pretty good cosmetic shape, you know. It needed some maintenance it looked like, which it still does. And when I was running those other two, the 545 was always the corn combine. It's got all kinds of special corn attachments in it, like on the walkers and stuff. And uh, so that was set up for that. And then the red one was set up for beans. And when I saw this one, it was a 7300. Same as the red one, just older. And I had a four row corn head that'll fit right on here. And, you know, I could put that bean head on if I had to. I've actually got a grain table, rigid grain table that would fit right on it. And I thought, wouldn't it be handy to have this combine to have as a helper combine for the other two? And then if you had one of them go down, you could just switch this one over and start in you know, helping or whatever you'd had to do till you get the other one fixed. Because that was another problem with running the old combines. You were fixing them all the time. I mean, unless you had an absolutely perfect weather year, you were having troubles. At least that's the way my ground was. It was muddy, you'd get stuff stuck, and you just had a lot of troubles. So that's was my thinking behind getting it originally and then this last time it was so darn cheap i just couldn't pass it up i mean now another thing back to the work at hand there's a bearing in here and it is more or less pressed into this cover sometimes it stays behind and comes off the cover comes off the bearing other times you got to take this nut loose and get it loose that way like take the bearing with the cover I'm gonna roll the dice here and try tapping on this cover and see if I can't get it to uh, come off of there you're right in the way but I think it's gonna work I'm about to destroy this <laughs> I'm about to destroy this camera mount again I'm wondering when I'm gonna hear the tink the small snap that lets you know. Oh, come on. See, this is another problem. I can't stand to be in this position this long. It may be the kind of thing where I need to get the loader over here and uh, you know what I'm saying. Use it as a scaffolding again. So I don't have to. Man. I'm having a lot of issues here. This isn't normally the tool I would recommend for this. Just happens to be what was handy. I'm not sure that we're gonna get it that way so I just as well take the nut loose so as we don't break it so that means more running for tools and that means more of Ross climbing down the ladder and more sadness it also would be nice if I had one of those bearings on hand which I bet I don't it should just be a roller bearing you can get at the auto parts store but 
we'll see what happens. Let me go get the, uh, watching my collar. What did I say we needed? Oh, a gigantic adjustable wrench and something better to maneuver that cover off. Uh-huh. That's what I figured. We would have no such luck of holding it. So, I don't know. We're getting very close to the point of stopping for the day because this ain't no fun. So you gotta be careful here because this is where you could really destroy it. See how much tension that was under? We don't want that. We want it to pop off of there, but not destroy it. Can we get it? Come on. If we use this big bruiser. It might slingshot off of there eventually. But like I said. Yeah, what you're gonna wanna do is just absolutely have nothing go your way in life, not just on this. All right, I managed to get this off of there and then I drove the bearing out. And I mean, it's definitely usable, <laughs> but I went ahead and ordered a new one and I ordered an extra one too for the red combine when we ever put it back together. Like I said, this, this would probably go fine, but while I got it apart, I might as well treat it to a $25 bearing. So that cover is off, and now you can see the aluminum V-groove pulley. So I don't know how I'm gonna wedge myself up under here because it's a little bit tight. But basically what we have to do now is we gotta take this belt guard off, or at least loose, so we can get the belt rolled in there. Uh, and I don't remember how difficult that is with that guard. I want to say that one time I just like took the bottom two loose and managed to get it in there, but then I'm also thinking that maybe that was a big headache and it would have been easier just to take her totally loose. Uh, you know what I mean? Ah, oh, looking like somebody has replaced the beater shaft in this old combine. That's interesting. So, she has had some service done to her over the years. I will get, what What do I need to do this? Well, <coughs> probably a 9 16th something or other to get those two loose. And I think that's what that is up there. So, yeah, that's what we'll start with. <laughs> I'm not used to having one that has all the shielding on it. Makes it kind of difficult. I checked from feel, and I'm pretty sure that those have like welded on nuts in the bracket. So that's a little easier for us. <coughs> Unfortunately, I wish it had that all the way around so a guy didn't need to have another thing to pull back. Oh, what fun this is, friends. I remember working on these combines, man. This time of year, it was miserable, just like it is now. The only difference is now I don't have to use it. When you have to use it to get done, it's a lot more stressful and sad. So, <laughs> this is a hassle. Ooh, see, we shouldn't be looking because I see another very bad thing. And I don't want to see that very bad thing. But I see that very bad thing. Oh, shoot. 
we're going to potentially have a major catastrophe on this one day in the form of exploding pulleys. So I best be looking for another one of those, and I'll show you in a second what I'm talking about. So a minute ago I noticed this red, which means this beater shaft's been apart. Then I saw, hey, they heated that to get it off. Then I saw, hey, it's cracked up there. And it's starting into here, so it'll be interesting to see how long we have before that self-destructs. Okay, well, <laughs> we just, in theory, saved ourselves work, but not really. We got more work to do now. This felt guard just broke off of here from Graviti, so that was obviously not connected anymore. So now I have to take those two loose and fix this. Ah, these combines are a never ending journey of sadness. I mean, <coughs> that's why I say you can't, you can't farm us any significant amount of acres and use one anymore. It's just not in the cards. I mean, you don't have a dealer that can come fix it for you while you're doing something else. You got to do it all yourself and you're just not going to have that kind of time. Oh, so this has gotten increasingly more difficult now. We'll get those two loose. Um, yep, and I, I figured that was coming. They are not 9 sixteenths. They're half inch. So, yeah. I guess we'll get mini impact maybe in a half inch wrench and take those loose. I could use a full size impact, I suppose. But I still need a half inch wrench. Oh, friends. It's always something. It just can't ever be a simple, simple project. It's always sadness. Yeah, I guess I'll go get more tools as per usual. I don't even know if you can make sense of that angle. It's probably not natural. I think that's more there. Come on. Battery's about dead on this. Lost the washer. That's good. seems to be turning in the screws on all my batteries uh. okay yep lost that one too That's good. oh flip the bolt out even I'm doing real dandy let's lose that part too that we need let's try that it's kind of good Kind of not. That way won't fit, so that's great. Then we could do that one from the top. Ah! Oh. Now that one, somebody was thinking. Of course, that does not help me right now, because what I'm trying to say is, those are carriage bolts, friends. Which means I can't go to the top, so I gotta do it this way. The old school style. Which means you're in the way. Because I didn't know I was gonna be doing this. Oh. Man, makes you wanna move to Florida or something. Like, I'm just kinda not into this cold weather with working on combines. Guess I could get my winter coat out. Really don't want to do that. Okay, come on. <laughs> now it's going to start getting difficult right at the end. So as to make this a very complex process. 
Aha. <laughs> oh man. There we go. Well, we don't really need to take those out of there. We just need to drop this cat. We need to be able to get out of there somehow. We can't get that out of there. Or not. <laughs> you wouldn't believe it if I told you. Oh, it won't fit out of here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. What a complex problem. <laughs> so nuts. Sure. Okay. Whilst we're this far, we might as well hang this belt up on here like it's supposed to be. That could be difficult. It could be not. I really don't want to have to go up the ladder if I don't have to. So I'll try to get you some shots. Maybe you can kind of see my struggle there. I don't know. Should just go up in there easy. I don't think it's, if I remember right, it's not difficult. But I don't know if I can do it from underneath without seeing what I'm doing. Yeah, there we go. Alright. Around there. Over. Under. Around the tree. Something, something, something. Hee hee. Alright. I'm thinking maybe I'm going the wrong way. I need to do it the other way, I think. This is the correct way. It would be easier if I put it this way and then roll it backward. Maybe not though. It's being a real pain in the old canoeton. We're so close. All we got to do is get on there. So that gives you a picture of what's happening. I don't know. Come on. Oh, it's so close. It's so close. I could put the bar in the other side and turn it. I suppose. I'm out of energy. Still fighting whatever kind of kung flu I have. I don't know. I just need to go a little more. Come on. Just a little, little more. Jeez. It's so close. I can smell it. Mother Goose. I tried turning the come on with the bar. What was that snap? You guys saw it, I didn't. Was that the belt jumping on? Or was that the belt tearing? I hope it was just nicely jumping on. I think it was. You guys witnessed it, I think, so we'll see when I edit the tape. But yeah, 
that should be what we want let me uh we may have to adjust that pulley so that it's the right tension uh i want to do something else though before i forget because i'm gonna have a <laughs> it'll be a major meltdown if i forget <laughs> to take my bar out of here that i had turning it I didn't want to walk down and get the combine bar so in the back of the pickup I had some kind of bootleg exhaust pipe and a hitch pin and that's what we used all right geez that wind the wind is so cold when it, it would probably be a really nice day if it wasn't for that it's a I don't know how fast wind this is but it's moving along pretty good Okay, we don't want to move that stuff or lose that stuff i should say we'll need it in a minute we don't want to lose this we're going to straighten that ladder too because it's really <laughs> it adds a little degree of difficulty when the ladder is tilted that way you wouldn't think it would but it makes it harder to climb all right so basically we just need to make sure that when you pull this up yeah see it's so tight now it won't spring over center and lock so yeah it might but i don't know it probably geez let's sit in the cab it's warm in here now oh no that needs some that needs some loosening it is too tight that would not work for us as always if you enjoy my videos give them a thumbs up leave a comment and tell me how dumb you think i am or if by some slim chance you liked it say that thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one